For this one, we're going to take a look at how to create this audio visualization, which reacts to the beat of the music. So when the beat kicks in, it makes the shape react to the beat of the music. Now, all of this was possible by IVG Design. Without him, this would honestly be such a long-winded process. He has created the right tools that we need to use and it simply creates all of the expressions. So all we need to do is just customize the audio template. Also go ahead and check out his social links down below to his YouTube channel. He has a plugin called Extrudalizer and all of the tools needed for this tutorial. And yeah, with that being said, let's jump straight in. So before we can actually start this tutorial, you want to scroll down on this video down below and get yourself to the download links and you want to download the project files and also the other links as well, such as the Sabre. You can also have any sound or music file. It doesn't have to be the same one as mine. But once you've got yourself these files, we're going to install them by getting ourselves into the file explorer. You want to locate where you've downloaded your After Effects. So for me, it's in program files in Adobe, Adobe After Effects, support files, and you want to locate the one that will say scripts. Go ahead and open up script UI panels, and you want to go ahead and copy and paste the extrudalizer alongside the tune sync and paste these two into here. Once you've got them installed, we can also go back to support files and you want to install the preset right here. We're going to create a new folder and we're going to call this one parametric shapes. Go ahead and open this up and you want to copy and paste this script or this file right here into this folder. So now that you've done that, we can now go ahead and open up the template file. And this will give you this error message. You just want to press OK. And there we go. We now have the audio template file. So basically, this is really simple. The way that this works, this is a visualization of the different frequency ranges when it comes to the audio. Now, at the moment, we don't have any sound whatsoever. So you just want to double left click on the music placeholder, open this up, and you want to drag and drop the music file into this project right here. Once you've done that, you will notice if we go back on the audio reactor, we now have this big peak and this big wave right here. We're going to narrow the frequency of this visualization right here by going to the controls. And we're just going to set this to 211. So basically what this will do is it will start on the 20 frequency range and go all the way up to 211. Now we also want to set this to manual rather than the template or the preset. And there we go, we now have the big audio peaks or the bass kicks in this visualization right here. So what you want to do is you want to target a specific peak which is very consistent throughout your whole clip. So for me, it's ranging around this area right here. So what you want to do is you want to move the selection or the box and you want to narrow this down and basically the way that this works is every time the bass kicks in and this box is filled in, it will output the power and it will make the shape react all the way up to 100%. If it's somewhere around zero or anything lower, it's just going to simply sit still. We can now create a new project or a new composition and you want to set this to 1920 by 1080. Preferably if you can set it to 60 but you can also have 30 and somewhere around three minutes and save it to any background color that you want. Now, once you've done that, we can go ahead and search for a parametric shape, which is this one right here. Double left click on this to open this up and there we go. We now have this single line right here. Now, in order to turn this into a shape, we need to select the vortex or vertex one and two, press Control or Command and D to duplicate it and we're just going to reorder this in the correct order. Once you've done that, you can open up the vertex control. And what you want to do is you want to focus on the vertex right here. So as you can see at the moment, it's a straight line, but if you apply 200 on the second one right here, this will make it go down. So the first one is responsible for the width if you want your shape to react sideways. And the second one is for the Y axis. So for us, we also want to set this one to 200 
and this will create this incomplete box right here. We can fill this in completely by ticking this option right here. And there we go, we now have a basic box right here. Now at the moment, nothing is going to happen. We don't have any reaction. So what we need to do is we need to go to window and we need to go down to the tune sync. What this will do is this will create all of the expressions to make this react. All we need to do is select the shape. You can press E and open up vertex one and vertex two. We're going to open this up and then open it up once again. Select yourself the first one and you want to select the audio reactor, which is this one right here. And if yours is blank for whatever reason, you just want to click on refresh and it will automatically pick it up. Once you've done that, you can click on tune sync. We only want the Y axis to be available or to be targeted. And then same goes for the second one. Select this one, tune sync, and then once again, select Y. And this will just make it go back down to a straight line. So nothing will happen at the moment. What we need to do is we need to scroll down and we're going to tell the properties that the maximum height is going to be minus 500. Now, this is going to be a little bit strange because you're actually working backwards. So if you wanted to go up, you would use a negative number compared to a positive. It's kind of like the opposites. So you just want to tell the other one as well to minus 500. So this is the maximum height it can reach. And as you can see, we now have this reacting box right here. So what we need to do now in order to convert this into a 3D shape, we need to get ourselves the extrudalizer plugin by going to window, going down to the extrudalizer. What you want to do is you want to minimize this for the effects. And we're going to open up the contents, select the shape, and then select path one. And then you want to go ahead and click on extrude lies. And what this will do is it will turn this 2D shape into a 3D shape. And there we go, it's done. We can press okay. And in order to make this 3D, we're going to change the appearance. And what you want to do is you want to go ahead and select the wireframe mode. We're going to set this color to white. And then we're also going to hide the anchor point and you want to set a stroke of two. And now if we open up the 3D transform, we can open up the orbit control. And then in here, we're going to set something like, let's say minus 35 for the Y rotation and then 30 for the X. And as you can see, we now have this 3D looking shape. We can also give ourselves some depth by adding 200. And there we go, we now have this cube right here. And if we have a look at this now, you can see it will start to react every time the beat kicks in. And then from here, to make this a neon shape, we're going to get ourselves a new solid. We're going to call this one neon, press OK, and you want to get yourself the saber effect. You want to apply it on this layer right here. We need to select ourselves the shape tool and make sure you've set this to mask. You want to get yourself four different masks of a box. And what we're going to do now is we're going to set this saber to apply it onto the layer mask. And this will apply it onto these masks right here. From here, we're just going to turn down the core size and also the brightness. And what we're going to do now is we're going to apply it onto the shape. And what we need to do is we need to open up the extrudalizer, minimize this one, and we're going to focus on the front, back, and sides. Starting on the front first, we're going to open this up, open up path one. And in order to set the first mask onto this path right here, we have to open this up and we're going to link this to the first path. So once you've dragged the pick whip onto that one, it will apply onto that side. So every time this shape reacts, the effect will also be in sync and react exactly the same. You want to do this for the back as well. Open up the path one, set the second mask to the path on the back. And there we go. We now have the back of this as well. And then finally, the last two is the mask free. 
we're going to minimize this and also open up the sides as well. Now for the sides, it can get a little bit confusing because you have zero to one, one to two, two to three, and three to zero. So the easiest way to tell where that side is, is to open this up. You want to select the path one, and this will tell you exactly where it's going to focus on. So as you can see, this will fill in the bottom area. You want to make sure that you have all of these boxes selecting the side that you're focusing on. So this one is okay. We can open this up, go to the third one and drag this down to the path. And there we go. We now have the bottom one. And then finally, of course, we have the fourth one. And for this one, we're going to once again, have a look and see which one that we want to target. This one is focusing on that side, which is what we don't want. Two to three will focus on this panel or this side right here. So it will definitely be three to zero. This one will target the top half of this shape. So once again, get yourself the pick whip, drag this down to that path, link it up, and there we go. We now have a complete shape. If we have a look at this now, you can see we have a 3D neon cube, which reacts to the beat of the music. So every time the beat kicks in, the shape will react. You can see this by going to the audio reactor. You can see the peak is full and the shape is fully reacting. And the great thing about this is that you can also animate this if you want to. So for example, if you wanted it to start off as a flat shape, what you can do is you can select the shape. You would set the first rotation to zero and the same goes for the X as well. You would set a keyframe for both of these, go further out and set this to minus 35 and also 30. So if we have a look at this now, you can see this will slowly start to make the shape rotate. Also, if you want to preview this with the sound, you will need to go back onto your music placeholder, press Ctrl or Command and C, and then paste it onto your comp one as well. So now you'll actually be able to hear the sound as well as your visuals. And then finally, if you wanted to get even more creative with this, you can actually change the color. So when it hits the beat or the bass kicks in, it will change the color of your shape. You can do this by selecting the neon layer open this up and then you want to open up the effects, select the glow color and you want to bring back your tune sync. You then want to once again tune sync this and let's say that we wanted the first color to be a baby blue. This will be the starting color and the second color which will be the peak. We can set this one to a red color. And as you can see, every time the audio or the bass kicks in, it will make the shape go a different color. And once again, big thanks to IVG Design. I would really appreciate it if you can all go and show him some love and support. Check out his plugin called Extrudalizer and his YouTube channel. It would be really cool to see if you can all comment on his YouTube video saying that I sent you. 